So we're here at the example table, and in this video we're going to be talking about sequences. A sequence is just an ordered list of numbers. So a few examples, say just the counting numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, this is a sequence. Maybe just the even numbers, this is a sequence also. Both of these can be given by nice formulas. One that can't be given by such a nice formula is this sequence, which is just formed using the digits of pi. And a slightly more complicated one that we can actually come up with a formula for, but I, we won't at the moment, is this one, where every other term is just the even integer and all the odd integers are actually reciprocals. So all these are examples of sequences. Now for us, what we care about most is the behavior of sequences as they tend toward infinity. So what's going on with these three dots? And for the sake of being explicit, in most cases, we're going to be dealing with sequences that are given by formulas. So in practice, we're not going to see a lot of stuff like this, where numbers are, where sequences are formed by the digits of something like pi. So let's look at some examples. So let's say that a sub n is 1 over n. What I'm saying here is that we're defining a sequence whose nth term, a sub n, is simply 1 over n. That's, what, that's all I'm doing here. Then the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n is the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n. And that limit is 0. And if it helps, think of 1 over x. Think of the behavior of 1 over x as x goes to infinity. We'll look at that idea uh, in greater detail in a moment. Another example. So let's say that a sub n equals n squared minus 5 over, say, 3n squared plus 1. Then the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n, right, the limit of our sequence, is what? Well, this might also remind you of the situation we've already dealt with, where instead of an n, we have an x. So the limit as x goes to infinity of x squared minus 5 over 3x squared plus 1. Well, we can figure out what the limit must be by looking just at the ratio of the leading coefficients. Since these exponents are equal, the leading terms have the same exponent, right, n squared, we can look at the leading coefficients and determine the answer. Let's do that explicitly. Um, or excuse me, let's figure out the limit explicitly, but we already know what answer we want, right? We want 1 third. So to figure it out explicitly, we want to get rid of these n squareds. So let's multiply the top and the bottom by 1 over n squared. And we get limit as n goes to infinity. n squared over n squared becomes 1, and then minus 5 over n squared. We're multiplying 5 by 1 over n squared. Divided by 3, right? 3n three squared divided by n squared is 3 plus 1 divided by n squared. Now, as n goes to infinity, this minus 5 over n squared goes to 0. The plus 1 over n squared goes to 0. So we can apply our familiar limit laws to get 1 third. Let's look at another example. So now let's set a sub n equal to the natural log of n over the natural log of 3n. So what can we do? So the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n is the limit of this expression. And we have to manipulate this somehow so we can simplify it. And we have here natural log of 3n. So we can apply one of the laws for logarithms to rewrite the denominator as the natural log of 3 
plus the natural log of n, right? Natural log turns multiplication inside into addition outside. So we get the natural log of 3 plus the natural log of n. Now we have a limit where the top is going to infinity, the bottom is also going to infinity, so we can apply a technique like the one we just used. Before we divided everything by n squared, now we'll divide everything by the natural log of n. So we get the limit as n goes to infinity of 1, right, natural log of n over itself, divided by the natural log of 3 over the natural log of n, plus 1. Now the only thing with an n in it is the natural log of n, and as we send that to infinity, that makes this term go to zero. So the limit is simply one.